Welcome biologists to this session where we're going to take a look at epistasis. Now this is quite a difficult topic but there are three that we need to be aware of. Now in an exam you don't really get a mark for mentioning what type of epistasis it is so I'd always just go for a general this is epistasis and you can tell epistasis is happening because the gene at one loci will affect the expression of the gene at another loci. So we're going to go through the three of them. Now, the first one we've got is recessive epistasis, and this is in, in this plant called salvia. And this is where the presence of homozygous recessive alleles prevents the expression of alleles at another loci. So here we have in a little bit more detail. The flower pigment is controlled by two genes. We've got Y and we've got R. Now, gene one codes for a yellow pigment, whereby our, if, I, if I'm going to have at least one dominant allele, I'm going to make the colourless molecule into a yellow pigment by making an enzyme that converts the colourless into the yellow. Similarly, at gene 2, if I have a dominant R, it means that I can then make an enzyme that converts the yellow pigment into the orange pigment. Therefore, if I have the recessive Y alleles here, then I'm not going to make a yellow pigment. It does not matter what I've got over here on the R. This double Y recessive will mask the expression of the R gene and that is recessive epistasis. So what I advise you do is to pause the video, do a genetic cross between two double heterozygous individuals and calculate the phenotypic ratio so you can figure out yourself what the ratio will be because it is not going to be your typical 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 that you would get if you did cross two heterozygous flowers. So pause the video now and have a go. But this is what you should have been crossing. These are the gametes of the parents that we should have got. So if we put them into the Punnett square and cross them like so, we should have got here a ratio of nine orange to three yellow to four white or colourless. So we should have got a nine to three to four ratio. Um, so that's recessive epistasis. The next one is dominant epistasis. And this is where the dominant allele at one loci masks the expression of an allele at a second loci. So again, here I've got two genes. So if I have a dominant D gene, it means that it doesn't matter what's going on over here, the squash will remain white regardless of what's going on over here. In order to make an enzyme that changes my colourless molecule into my yellow, I have to have two recessive Ds. In order to make an enzyme from gene 2 that makes my yellow pigment into green, it means I've got to have two recessive Es. So this is dominant epistasis, whereby one dominant gene here can mask the expression, stop the expression of the gene over here. So again, if you want to pause the video and have a go at crossing two heterozygous individuals using the Ds and Es, please do that now and work out what the phenotypic ratio would be. Here is the example and the cross of what we should be doing. So here are the gametes. If I put them into my Punnett square and did the cross like so, I should then get a 12 white to three yellow to the one green individual, so 12 to three to one. The last example is complementary fashion. And this is where um, I need at least one dominant allele at each loci in order for a color to be expressed. So you can see this in sweet peas. So gene one here, in order to make the enzyme from gene one, I need to have at least one dominant C and this will cause an enzyme to be made that changes this colorless precursor into a second colorless precursor. Um, in gene two, if I have at least one dominant R, this means that I can change this second colorless precursor um, via the enzyme made in gene two into my purple pigment. If I did not have at least one dominant gene at each of these loci, my plant is going to remain white or colourless. So again, if you want to pause the video and have a go at crossing these two heter double heterozygous individuals here, um, figuring out what the gametes are and then what the ratio will be, please pause the video and have a go at that now. But this is what we should have been getting. We should have got those uh, gametes, sorry, that shifted there at the top. If I plug them into the Punnett square, this is what I should have got. Um, and I can see, you can see from there that I should have got a nine purple to seven white, so I should have got a nine to seven ratio. Uh, and guys, that's pretty much everything you need to know on epistasis. Like I said in an exam, you do need to know the importance of enzymes made from those genes. And I would refrain from using the words dominant, recessive, or complementary fashion in terms of when you're stating that epistasis is used.